You know what guys? I really wish I had the OEM Mopar trailer hitch with the factory cutout to make everything look completely stock and also the wiring harness to make it fully functional. Oh wait, I do! <laughs> look at that beauty! Hey what's up guys, I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we're going to be working on our 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ, the old Green Hornet, and what we're going to do is install a factory trailer hitch. Now obviously this one didn't come from the factory, but I did score a trailer hitch from the junkyard. I also was able to pull out the factory wiring harness for it, and the thing that makes this thing the best was I also got a brand new Mopar cut out. It's that little plastic trim piece that's going to get inserted right in there to fit around the trailer hitch to make this thing look like it just rolled off the old showroom floor with the hitch. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, now the number one main thing, super important, before you even attempt this project, you're going to want to run your gas tank empty right there on E. Gas light is on. Uh, you need to do this because 20 gallons of gasoline is really heavy, trust me. All right, once your gas tank is empty and you know you're not going to be driving this bad boy, we could go ahead and work on taking our rear bumper cover off. Right in here, in our bumper, under this little piece of weather stripping, pop out these fasteners. more down here of a t15 torx right in here now you can come over to your wheel well and these are plastic rivets so these are gonna have to break off like that once you popped off on both sides which <laughs> popped off once you've broken off all three rivets on both sides you could go ahead and pull out this little wheel well liner right there That'll give you some room because there is a 10 millimeter little tiny fastener right here. Of course, if your Jeep is rusty and corroded like mine, the bolt will snap off. Yep, that's right. And it'll probably just pull itself right out of the bumper just like that. So I'll have to address that later. But yeah, once you break all the bolts on both sides, uh, you can go ahead and Pop this out right here. There's a couple clips right there. One and two. When you work those out, the bumper just slides off. All right, we got our bumper cover dropped. This is our bumper, it's our foam bumper. And we got the metal frame behind it. And here we go, this is our gas tank. Now there was a recall for these Jeeps. The rear accidents would cause the fuel tank to catch on fire. So what Jeep decided to do was put a trailer hitch to prevent or protect the gas tank from getting struck or ignited or whatever. It gave it some extra beef. I think I might have a factory recall on this which I guess the dealership is supposed to install one for free. I did call a dealership and they gave me some roundabout excuse and story of why they didn't have to do it. I said, screw it, I'll do it myself. This way I get the content and I'll show you guys how to do it yourself in case the dealership screws you guys too. So no big deal. Of course, I got my trailer hitch right there. We're gonna go ahead and put that on. But you know what? This factory gas tank skid plate is actually in pretty good condition so i think i'm just gonna take this down clean it up i'm also gonna clean up this rusty part of the frame paint that and then uh, everything will be nice all right bumper off and i took out the evap system if you want to see that go check out my evap video if you didn't get to check that out yet now i'm gonna go under here and i'm going to start loosening not removing just yet but i'm gonna loosen all these 18 millimeter bolts that are holding on my skid plate that are going right into the frame all right again guys 18 millimeter just gonna loosen them up and you kind of want to make sure you soak these things with penetrating oil before you start this process as the rust falls Again guys, your side is going to look a little different. You'll have an EVAP box here. Mine is out. But uh, hey, now you guys can see. <laughs>
Oh, there goes my rotten tow hook bracket. I will not be needing this anymore. Good lord, look at this. All right, if you're a Northeast Jeep owner like myself, and you have a rust problem like this, <laughs> this is where you're gonna wanna treat your rust. You wanna get up under here, kind of grind down some of this nasty or rotten rust. Don't make sparks, you got a gas tank right here, and uh, you can power wash all this crap, scrub it up really good, give it a fresh coat of paint, which is what I'm about to do right now. So we're gonna turn this crap into gold. I love gold. After most of the day scrubbing and cleaning and painting, this is my skid plate for the gas tank. Now what I'm gonna do is drop this whole sucker onto a jack, then we could go ahead and finally put in our beautiful new trailer hitch. All right, got my jack in place, ready to catch. Now I'm just gonna take down the rest of these 18 millimeter bolts that's holding this thing up. That's it. I got all my bolts out. This sucker's perfectly in place, right where I need it to be. Now, this was a regular old trailer hitch that I got from a junkyard. It was rusty, it was crusty. I started grinding this thing down. I was gonna paint it myself. But man, it was a lot of work, and I figured I'd go over to KK Finishing, say what's up to my buddies Chris and Casper, and they put this gorgeous, gorgeous coating on it. I'm so glad it came out great. Almost forgot, we still have pieces to unwrap. The crossbars, look at that, beautiful coating. All right, before we go ahead and install this, I just wanna show you guys one more trick I picked up when dealing with powder coating. If you are going to have a part that is gonna be metal to metal contact, what you're gonna wanna do is put on a little bit of electrical tape. Simple stuff, and this will help prevent the uh, wearing when your metal is sandwiched together and uh, it will preserve your powder coating it will prevent rubbing which will eventually lead to rust and it's uh, plastic so it's not gonna absorb any moisture all right here we go got my anti seize I got a fistful of cleaned up bolts got all the rust off use the old wire wheel so these are looking good clean threads and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my big heavy trailer hitch and I'm going to slide it right between the frame and this gas tank skid plate. I'm just going to go ahead and cruise it right on in. We'll let it glide on that nice electric tape and it won't scratch, hopefully. And then, hopefully, <laughs> this jack will be able to hold everything up while I pop a couple bolts in. Now this is the part of the project where you're going to want to ask for a buddy's help. I'm gonna try to do this alone. If I could do this alone, you guys could do this with some help. All right, here it comes. Right here on the driver's side, I'm hung up on these fuel lines. I'm just gonna try to push these up a little bit so I can slide this right past. Looks like we got this thing in place. Um, now I'm just going to try to hand thread one of these bolts. I'm going to do the back position, one on each side, and then I'll go ahead and try to pick up this part and do that. Well, I guess this would be the front one. I'll do the front one, then I'll lift it up and do the back one. So here we go. Whew. 
All right, we got one in. I got a clear shot right here for another one. I'm just gonna go for that. Anti seeds. There we go, guys. Pulled this baby right off our little stand. beautiful <laughs> all right there it is looking good i could see myself in the reflection of this paint thank you again kk this is awesome um so here we go we have the trailer hitch sandwiched in between the frame and the fuel skid tank i know you guys are saying it's wrong you're right you're right the hitch has to be underneath the skid plate but again i could not do that alone this is the by yourself method where you slide it in the skid plate and the jack holds the hitch where it needs to be if i had a buddy then i would go ahead and put this underneath this and bolt it up it even fits better that way, but this is good enough. So, there you go. It is on, looking good. All right, last thing we're gonna do to secure the skid plate onto the hitch, we're gonna put on our little crossbars here. Now, of course, I put some electrical tape on there right now. And they're just gonna go in like that, get them in place. And I got my four 15 millimeter bolts, nuts actually. Uh, I, I use one of these to uh, to install the sway bar in the uh, Black Beauty, so I had to find a spare. Doesn't match. Not gonna like it, but it'll have to do. <laughs> Whatever. Ooh, and he sees. This baby is on. It is good to go. This thing could tow anything. Well, anything under 3,000 pounds, I believe, but... The problem is, it is not quite legal yet. That's why we gotta install the factory wiring. It's pretty simple, it's just gonna be plug and play, but we gotta go take off this panel. All we gotta do is pop out a couple screws, like one, two, three, the rest are all clips in there. Trim piece is bent up out of the way, and this is where we're gonna be working with now, this little flimsy piece of rubber stuff. We're just gonna set this aside and look right there. That's what we're gonna plug into. It's already prepared for us. And then you can peel back this carpet a little more and look, here we go. We have a little grommet. This is our little access hole. Boink, take that out. And hey, there's our evap box right down there. All right, this foam piece has a bunch of relays in there. It's nice and insulated. What we're gonna do is just Drop this in right here into this crack, and look, right there. Plug that in right there. And we're gonna lock the little red locking tab, just like so. And now look at this wire. It has muscle memory, isn't this great? Look, we got a little connector right here. This is just gonna go right here. We got one up here. And we got another one over here. Plugs right in. Look at that. Stuff this out of the way. We're gonna run this over here now. As the wire comes around, just gonna go ahead and drop our black connector right through this hole. We're gonna reach up under our evap box and just start to pull it back down. There we go. I'm just gonna keep on feeding it till we get to the grommet, which is already installed on the harness how convenient is that perfect and we just set our grommet in give this thing a nice seal there we go that is in there and look at this got one more plug that will insert right in there excellent now the whole harness is nice and tucked out of the way perfect oem installation that is done right there don't forget your plastic piece, it is super important. Not really. We go ahead and put on our interior panel. There, <laughs> basically done. All right, we're just
just gonna continue this simple installation from the bottom. Now we got these plugs, so we're just gonna find the holes and start pushing them in. Now this one is filled with foam. I guess that's body filler foam. It's rejecting me. Skip that for now. But the next one lines up right here. In. Next one down the road. This one's gonna go in right there. Now we're just gonna drop this right back here. Hey dog. <laughs> Fiona's getting big. There we go. Pull it right here. And send it right out. All right, the last part of phase two is gonna be installing the main wire connector over here. This is the Chrysler factory Mopar one, seven pin connector. Clean this up real nice. Also restored the factory screws. So what we're gonna do now, go ahead and grab the dielectric grease. I probably should have put some dielectric grease on the inside, but what are you gonna do? There we go, better to be on the outside than the inside if I had to choose, because this is where the weather's at. Push this on nice and hard. And lock it. All right, just gonna slide this into place. It's that easy. I said that easy. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, why not? And I'm gonna dip them in anti seeds because they will rust. Believe you me. Believe you me. And these factory screws were a quarter inch. There we go. Phase two complete. Looking good. All wired up, mounted, nice and strong. And now I got a nice little plug I could use to uh, drill a hole to access my crankshaft positioning sensor. But that's another project for another day. So on to phase three. We got a fit this onto our bumper. All right guys, phase three is putting on the bumper cover, this thing right here, but first we gotta trim it so it could fit our little indent. I don't know what you call this, this trim piece, but this didn't come with a template in my little kit. So what I did was, I just made a little center mark right here. I punched in some of this masking paper and this, let's see. This hole is the middle, so I'll mark this piece of paper that this is the middle. I'll go ahead and line it up here, and then I'll just notch out the holes. All right, there we go. Just gonna start with this middle one right here. Just gonna go ahead and mark it one more time. I'm gonna drill this, and then one at a time, I'm gonna mark and drill so I know they're all perfect. That is right where it needs to be, looking good. Now we just gotta trim out this inside part. So I will mark it here. And this is what we're gonna cut away to make room for the trailer hitch. Awesome. Time for some body work. After some chopping and cutting and wallowing out of the holes, I think I'm pretty happy. Actually, I am pretty happy with how this turned out. Exactly where I want it. So, before I go and install this permanently, I'm going to address this bumper. Now, if you have a Laredo bumper, this is good to go. It's going to be plastic. But I'm going to touch this up, repaint it, and uh, then we'll get this together. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going with a Rust-Oleum hammered black surface. This is going to be not quite black. It usually dries to be like more of a dark gray, but it is textured, so it'll do a great job of hiding the imperfections. It'll also match 
this texture and this isn't exactly black either so we're gonna mask the imperfections have a nice texture and you know what this will kind of be set off like a lower valence of a sports car so i think that'll look really cool let's get it All right, there we go. It's not terrible, it ain't great either. But I really like the way I have the green here and the offset texture over here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put on our trim piece. I'm gonna set this in place just like we installed it. There we go. And now this kit came with a handy dandy tool package and it's got these little plastic screws. Just like what you would find on the back of a vacuum connection on your XJ AC controls. Look at that. So these are gonna screw onto those little nubs. We'll tighten them down, firm them up, so this thing is in place. Alright guys, check this out. I got a handful of those same type of plastic fasteners. They look like the plastic fasteners that go on the protective panel of the bumper uh, because they are. I took them off my old wrinkly faded one and I got this new piece. This is a Tan Yang I got online. I'll throw a link in the description of course so you could replace your crappy bumper protector. But Gonna put this one on the Green Hornet and that should complete this bumper restoration. It's gonna look so nice. So here we go. All right, nice new step plate on the bumper. That's looking great. Matches the new little trim piece for the hitch. I'm loving it. Um, I guess we just gotta get ready for mounting it soon. So check this out, guys. We have those four little fasteners. There's two on each side. They look like this. Now, if you'll remember, I snapped them off. There's one head still in there. So I'm gonna have to remove that. And it took me two WJs at the junkyard to find replacement hardware. They're very unique. They got like an anchor hole right here. They're threaded to anchor into the plastic. And it's got a 10 millimeter nut up top. Luckily, the new set came with new 10 millimeter nuts, just in case your old ones are rusted. But if you snap those off, you're SOL. So hit up the junkyard. If you can't find these at a junkyard, you might be able to find these. Now these are XJ header panel fasteners, and they are just about the same size. Check this out. Look at that there. They're just about the same length. They're just about the same pitch. This is a little bit different on the XJ, but the best part is they take the same nut. So look at that. So you might be able to score yourself some XJ header panel fasteners. I wouldn't recommend taking them from a good XJ header panel. They're kind of stuck in that fiberglass. But if you have a front end collision XJ, you might be able to just yoink these out and that could be your replacement if you can't get a good set from WJ's. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this broken one out and I'll go put in the new ones. Whew, there we go. Drill a couple holes, use a snap ring plier to get this sucker out. Gross. All right. One new anchor, two new anchors, bada bing bada boom. All right, 
Time to install these little white plastic clips. Now, mine broke during the removal process, so I went ahead and I got some more clips at the junkyard when I got these anchors. And now that they're on the vehicle, I'll show you how you're supposed to take them off. This is a nice little E7 bit. It's got a nice little reverse Torx right here that you can just take them off. That's how you should remove them. And uh, if you don't have one of these E bits, the good old vice grips will work just like this. Get the very edge. Don't pinch the threads. You don't want to jack them up. So that is an E7. So time to reinstall these clips. It's really simple. They just slide right in place. There we go. The side is ready for our reinstallation. And we can go ahead and slide on our refurbished bumper, bumper cover. All right, we're gonna line up our clips in these giant holes right here, like so. We're also gonna line up this guide hole right here and our two new screw holes. All right, when it's lined up, give it a good click in. Nice. Same thing with this side. Oh, oh. <laughs> I still have a broken screw in here. Busted. Now, clip on our bumper and then install our nice new screws with anti seize. All right, last thing we got to do is secure these little fasteners right here. Now, these are the old ones, but I also got a handful of new ones that came with the new package. So the ones that I'm gonna see more, well, <laughs> see more butts. Hey, everybody, I wanna see more butts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna pop the nice looking ones in here. There we go. Nice, fresh, black plastic clips. And we also got two nice new Torx bits for either side. And for the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the original ones. All right, last thing we're gonna do is slide on this wheel well liner right here. It's just gonna slide nice and neat behind the bumper and line up with these two little holes. Now we're gonna secure this bad boy with plastic rivets. I got this little plastic rivet tool on Amazon. It definitely comes in handy, especially when working on WJs. So we're just gonna pop them in, slide them in, give this a squeeze. There we go, just like that. Riveted in place, just like the factory. All right, I'm gonna do all of these on the other side. Beautiful. All right, guys, that concludes phase three. That concludes our project. Man, this is looking so good. Got a decently painted bumper, a nice new step plate. Look at this. I got uh, my new trim piece right here around the hitch with some offset paint around the hitch. We got my textured stuff right there. That is great. I got the painted looking really nice gas tank skid plate and uh, Wow, this trailer hitch, this is the best part. Brand new, beautifully powder coated OEM factory trailer hitch. Connected stuff right here. All right, here we go. Got one of these nice little gizmos at Lowe's, I believe. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in. Beautiful, excellent fit. And now it's got these little indicator lights, so we don't actually have to plug in a trailer. This is all we need, so moment of truth. All right, lights on. Check. Left turn. Check. Right turn. Check. Hazards. And <laughs> check. All right. Hey. All right, guys. It's even better when it works. So I think I found the bezel part number right here. It's 8220-4628. If you could find one online, definitely grab it. It definitely finishes this out really nice. Completely factory, 
perfectly installed. I love it. Um, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this project. I hope you guys learned something that you could uh, tackle this install on your own without the dealer in case they screw you on the recall. And there we go. A nice little touched up bumper. Everything's looking good. It is functional and I am super stoked. So thank you so much for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next project. Peace. Check this out. The Green Hornet is really living up to its name.